I like the question about why it is we don't involve politicians in thinking aloud, because after all, we have people here who are producing research which might be thought to be immediately relevant to what they are saying. There are two problems here. First of all, not all politicians want to know about the latest research. Uh, I can remember, I think it uh, was somebody who was in the Blair government who talked about the fact that policy there was what they called policy-based evidence rather than evidence-based policy. In other words, you didn't look at the evidence and then construct a policy which fitted the evidence. You decided what your policy was and then went out looking for evidence which reinforced that policy. So not all politicians really want to sit down and listen to the latest research. Because, of course, in some cases, politicians are driven more by moral imperatives than by what social scientists may wish to say. I mean, particularly in the area, let me just give you one example, in the area of law and order. It might be very well for criminologists to come along and show that long prison sentences don't provide any extra deterrence, they don't do any particular good, that those people are subjected to them are just as likely or unlikely to reoffend when they come out as if you had shorter sentences, whatever. Now, politicians aren't really going to listen to this sort of advice because they're not handing out long sentences because they've seen the research which shows that long sentences are particularly effective. What they've seen are headlines in tabloid papers saying that X is due to be released after having served only five years of their ten-year sentence. That policy in relation to crime and law and order is probably more regularly made in the headlines or by the headlines of the tabloids than it is made by serious social scientists who've gone about researching the area. But I think secondly the problem is that it's this dreaded problem of balance um, because if you're inside the BBC, particularly recently of course we've had the election coming up, the concerns about the BBC of having balance. So if you're going to have a conservative politician sitting in the studio, someone is going to say at some point, I think we should have somebody from the other side represented as well. Or if you have a conservative this week, then you should have someone from the Labour Party next week. So to an extent, we rather steer clear of policy debate. We have a researcher who comes in and they might say at the end of it, as a result of my research, I would feel that what we should be doing is this. That as soon as we introduce a politician and say, well, why aren't you doing that? we're going to have demands to say, well, just a minute, why didn't you have Willits from the Conservatives? Why didn't you have anybody from the Labour side of it? That's the sort of second reason. I think thirdly, I it's a, it's a very bad thing to say this, I know, but in a way, I don't find policy recommendations absolutely gripping radio. You know, uh, it's... It can begin to sound a little bit as though you're hectoring the audience. You say, well, this is what we should be done. This is how you should go. The supermarket should be closed down. We shouldn't have any more. We must revive the high street. I mean, they become banners and slogans rather too readily. So I'm more content to have lay out the research, ask people to suggest some of the implications of the research, and leave it at that. It is, I recognise, something something of a cop-out, and I sometimes feel it's a cop-out, but I can't think of any other way of doing it. With a radio programme, it, you have to cut out anything which might seem to be trespassing into other domains. You have to have your own little domain. This is what we do, whether we're you and yours, or whether we're thinking aloud, or whether we're the media show. So we have to, if you like, we have to, what was it, I remember the words worthy and sonnet, which starts with something like nuns fret not at their convent's narrow gate. In other words, we can try and make something good out of the fact that we are confined to this 28-minute space once a week. And I think if we try to broaden it, politicians, policy, whatever, we might lose, if you like, the, uh, the essence of the programme. We might throw away some of the smaller insights because we were looking too much at the broader picture. Get more from the Open University. Check out the links on screen now.